Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It is the Brass Tax Podcast, episode 39. We're your hosts, Rick and Adam. I'm Rick. That's Mr. Adam. Coming live and direct. Or actually, no, I can't really say that. Live-ish. Live for whatever time you're you're listening to this right now. Who cares? World's still in turmoil. We're just dealing with it one day at a time. <laughs> what? Term Earl. Yeah, it's term it's tumultuous out in these streets, dog. Right. S- speaking of these streets, I was uh so right before the show, I was telling Adam this a little bit earlier, but um I was down at the old seven eleven and uh as you're all aware by now, there's no shortage of uh characters around that area. <laughs> <laughs> and um of course, you know, our special friend uh you know, the lady that's been involved in a, in a couple of our stories, she was working the counter and uh she was the only one there as usual. And um, basically what was going on is uh, the line was, was kind of just, Adam, you know how the layout is like the register, they have you line up uh, around and down the first aisle there. And so yeah, it's, and it's split into two sec, two. Yeah. Of approach, right. Yeah. So this time only one, only one register is open. Um, and there's like a line of people. There's like six, seven people in line. And I'm like kind of towards the back. And there's this dude I recognize from the liquor store, um, kind of in the middle of the line. And normally he's a pretty cool guy, like overly energetic, you know, and I, I hate to sound like such an asshole, but that does bother me sometimes when people are just like overly excited and like just overly energetic and stuff like that. And another thing that bothers me is when people, when people use the opportunity, like when they're standing in line, most of the time, I don't know about you guys, but like, I like to just shut the fuck up and mind my own business until it's my turn. But everywhere I go, it seems like inevitably you run into the one guy who has to try to be the source of entertainment for everybody else waiting in line. And, you know, generally these people fail miserably and it's, it's a true testament to the uh, human condition because generally instead of just shutting the fuck up and waiting in line, like a decent person, these people double down and they try to like keep going until they get a laugh out of somebody. And I, I just, I loved watching this dude bomb because there was an older guy behind him and we were kind of like the the line got down to where like the three of us were kind of standing in front of like the little toy section in uh, 7-Eleven and the guy's just continuing to talk. He's like, man, I love, you know, sometimes, you know, you, you look at these little toys and stuff like that. It really takes you back to your childhood. Right. And the guy behind him was like, I never played with any of that shit when I was a kid. And so the kid's like, well, yeah, I guess you're a few years older than me. And it's like, no, 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 no. This kid that was trying to be everybody's like entertainment for the line, he's like 22 or some shit like that. And the guy behind him was like pushing 60. (laughs) (laughs) And this kid kept trying to bring up like references from when he was a kid and he couldn't understand why nobody in line like didn't understand it. He was talking about sock and boppers and shit. And I just wanted to yell out like, Dude, shut the fuck up. They didn't have sock and boppers when the duff when the dust bowl was in effect. Like, what are you who are you who are you trying to entertain here? Sock and boppers? Are you talking about like rock'em sock and robots? No, no, no. You remember the sock and boppers? They're basically just inflatable punching gloves and you could you could Oh yeah. Yeah, the the stupid sock and boppers, sock and boppers, more fun than a pillow fight. That whole thing. Mm. I never really had them growing up though, because that was like one of those things where like It's basically just a beach ball you put on your arms or you put on your hands. And, you know, my parents, God bless them, uh, frugal people growing up uh, out of necessity. And so I never had sock and boppers because you had to like mail in like fucking 40 bucks or whatever to get sock and boppers. And I just remember my parents being like, dude, we're not we're not spending $40 on concave beach balls. No, that sounds fucking stupid, dude. Yeah, it's one of the... um, one of the rare moments from my childhood of not getting something I wanted where I kind of like as an adult, I'm like, oh, thank God. You know, thank God that that passed me by. It was a good move. Yeah, I agree, man. I just, I just, I can't stand it sometimes when people, people have to use being out in public as like this center of attention thing. It's like these people just can't go throughout their day without having all eyes on them. Well, I think a lot of it has to do with, I think there's a lot of lonely people too out there, you know? That's a good point. Like, there's probably some lonely people that like they live, you know, young guys probably like him or something are living by themselves. Like you're in a quarantine. Who knows? I don't know. And they're probably socially awkward, clearly. Right. Maybe, yeah. You know, and it's so, you know, they got to, you know, but 
Either way, I'll be honest with you. Any if I'm going to a store, I've definitely at least taken an edible. I don't want to talk to anybody. Yeah. I want to get I'm there to get a few items and get the fuck out and not and just not have any conversation. We got no time for that crap. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's it's Hug tough. Puppies, dude. Now now <laughs> now I feel kind of bad about it because you're, you're right, and and that's the thing. I like it's so hard for me to. Well, put, don't feel bad about it, but well, like it's hard yeah. not to when you put it that way. It's like this fucking young guy who feels isolated from the world around him. He's just trying to get some social interaction. Now I feel like a cock for it. I didn't yeah. say anything out loud that could have been misconstrued as disrespectful, but still, I, I do feel guilty sometimes when I when I judge people just like straight up out the gate. But at the same time, it's like, we all do that shit. I'm just being honest about it. Of course. We're all having those same thought stuff. But yeah. Yeah. I just, I don't know, man. I, I, that's one thing I just don't, I can't, I can't get on board with that part of the human condition is that like, we still live in a day and age when, when humans are just so disingenuous they they will say one thing and do the exact opposite right in front of you and still fucking stick to their guns. It's the yeah, dumb I, as yeah. shit. That's why I try to avoid <sighs> having too many conversations with too many people. Right. Yeah. I mean, because yeah. at that rate, the the this I guess like your your um potential for failure or like running into somebody who's just insufferable. Like you, the more people you involve yourself with the higher the likelihood is that you're going to come across something or someone that you just fucking detest. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't have, I don't have anything good to say. I don't want to have a lot of conversations with a lot of people. Like, what are, like yeah. Okay. Like, I, yeah, I don't want to hang out with a lot of people. Yeah. It's, it's bullshit. You got to find somebody, you know, like you and I were lucky. We ran into each other just through sheer fucking, uh, entropy and it worked. You know, we, it's very rare that two people with this much, uh, hate, and and malaise towards their fellow their fellow man uh it's very rare that people like us find another like-minded individual in their lifetime that they sure. can uh sit down for an hour every week and just like bitch with you know yeah i mean it's not even about yeah hate or anything it's just uh, i don't know man well, I'm, I'm, i just feel like i'm wasting my time having a conversation with people like uh well, it, it's, it doesn't help that whenever you encounter most people, like if you're not friends with somebody or you don't really care about somebody or don't care about what they're saying, it's the equivalent of just having like a fucking energy vampire on you at all times. It just sucks the energy out of you and you're just like, oh my God, I could fall asleep standing up talking to this nobody. Yeah. I think that's the biggest problem. It's just, uh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And, and, and like, it doesn't help when, you know, yeah, take edibles. I don't even know why I do it. Like I'll take edibles knowing it's going to make me super <laughs> just socially weird. Yeah. Too aware of everything that's going on. That's the worst I mean, part about it. Yeah. That's the, that's why it trips me out because I'm just too aware of everything that's going around. Like you just start looking at everybody like, Oh, they're acting like this. And it's like, Holy shit. This is fucking nuts. Like that's why it's too sensory overload. I agree. I agree completely. And that's like the double edged sword that, comes along with marijuana is like, mm -hmm. you know, it makes you, it makes you self-aware, which in a lot of aspects is a very good thing about that. But in public like that, especially during like a health crisis or something, you see, you see too much and you recognize too much and you see a lot of inconsistencies. And so on top of already not wanting to be around like crowds and be around random people and shit like that, mm -hmm. you've got that compounded on top of it. And it just makes for a situation where it's like, dude, I'll just pay the fucking extra and have them deliver it. It's not even like I buy that much at one time anyway. Yep. <clears throat> but, yeah. It, yeah. And it, it, it's not like we don't, I mean, we, we will go out to the movies once a year, you know? Yeah. I mean, well, it's been a while for you and I, I mean, we've, we, there hasn't really been anything. I feel like that you and I were like, Oh, let's go see this. No, no, there's nothing. But, I mean, there's definitely nothing now, but right. But you're right. Every once in a while we'll step out <laughs> and we'll hit the town yeah. together. Yeah. It's usually a terrible movie, though, because it's once a year, and it's like, oh, let's do Star Wars. We're just, well, it's time to. Yeah, yeah. I remember, um, I remember when uh, the Force Awakens comes or came out. You and I, um, it was you, me, and uh, the girl I was dating at the time, and I remember like we were just super coked out. 
and we showed up to the theater and like idiots we just assumed there was going to be tickets but it was like it's fucking star wars and it had just come out and i remember it would be it was it was really close to midnight and i just remember you and i like walking away from the box office being like god damn it like adam and i when shit doesn't go our way we're just like oh that fucking figures universe is working against us and then the girl i was with was like it's okay we'll see it some other time like just trying to be nice and like add levity to the situation i just remember me and adam looking at each other like somebody better shut this bitch up yeah because we like it was we prepared for that to be what we were going to watch right well we make an event out of everything we make a day of stuff like if we know we're going to go see some stand-up if we know we're going to go do anything adam and i have like certain you could even call it a ritual like we we have a ritual before and after the show we have a ritual like you know before the pandemic and all this dumb shit adam and i had like a weekly hangout you know like there's part there's a lot more that goes into the show than just preparing for the show itself there's a lot of cigarettes and a lot of um pre and post show shits that go down you know it's just like anything else but when it comes to big events or, or something that adam and i are like really excited about doing we we make a whole thing of it yeah. No, well, I mean, yeah, because it's important. So yeah, it just, right? it, yeah, it just adds to the fucking letdown whenever, like, the main event gets canceled, you know? And we're already, but, hyped, from, we're already hyped from the coke. But you did bring up cigarettes. Yes. Which brings us to a topic that we've spoke about. There's some, there may be a connection, potentially, with nicotine and keeping you getting infected infected from the virus or making yes yes i have i have seen that but before we dig too deep into it let me go ahead and hit this button real quick and i know you love it good god well i've got some good news and some bad news okay give me the bad news it's a girl what's the bad news they're dead <laughs> This whole thing fucking sucks. I mean, this is the biggest pile of shit. All right, now that we got that out of the way, um, so like Adam was saying, uh, there are some. Uh, I don't even know what you would call them. Would you just call them reports, or would you call these legitimate studies that are being done? But basically, what Adam was alluding to is like you know, there's there's this thing going on in uh, France where they are testing the I guess uh, they're trying to see how useful nicotine is in terms of uh, stopping the coronavirus from from getting. I think the, they're giving first responders nicotine patch. Right. Yeah, they're doing that in France, and so what they're thinking is that because it's a bron or a uh, yeah, it's a it's a bronchial issue or some shit like that or respiratory disease. They're they're thinking that I, it wasn't it didn't have to do with the same like the receptors that the nicotine. Uh, goes into or whatever the fuck. That's the same receptor that COVID attacks or whatever. Something like that. Yeah, I'm not. I'm. I, this is all fairly new, so I'm not super uh, versed on it. But it is interesting. It's very, very interesting. Look, I'm not a nicotinologist. I'm not a virologist. <laughs> you know, so can't really opine on this. But if it were to be true, it would be pretty cool. It would be very vindicating. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, come on. Now we can smoke. People who are gonna out in public that are smoking, are like, oh, those people are serious about protecting themselves. That's right. That's right. And that's the thing is like, again, it's just very weird. You know, statistically, you look at you look at some of these cases like when this when this virus was first becoming um, a problem in China. Statistically, you didn't see a lot of smokers getting it, if any at all. Like that was a thing. And now again, I try not to. I try not to take everything um, as fact when I read shit like that. And also we know that um, China's notorious for, for bullshitting their numbers and their statistics and stuff like that. But I feel like that would be a statistic that isn't really worth um, convoluting or trying to hide, you know, the fact that like smokers are less susceptible to it because who doesn't, who doesn't want to beef up those nicotine sales in whatever respective country you're living in. Yeah. But it would be, well, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, their their numbers aren't accurate, but I mean, they definitely have a lot of people that smoke. Yeah, just a couple. There, there's a handful of people in in Asia in general that like to smoke. Uh, but what would be nice? <laughs> I'd like to see the implement or the re-implementation of a smoking section in my in my favorite dining establishments. 
Ow. If it, it could stave off the coronavirus for everyone, yeah, I mean, you know, what if that's all it took? Just a little secondhand smoke. Mm-hmm. Yep. You see a lady with a newborn walk in, you just go, you go, kind of ride by, and just give it a little crop dust. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just blow it in her face. Off. She thanks you. Oh. She thanks yeah. you for it. <laughs> yeah, dude. Oh, I was on my last one. I just ran out. I haven't bought a new pack yet. I'm I'm glad you were here. Yeah, this could be the future, dude. Doing God's work. Just being heroes, dude. God, I tell you what, though. I, I cannot wait for this new computer to get here because I'm sure you all just heard it uh, a couple of seconds ago, but like, I just slammed my knee into the desk when I was trying to move my foot out of the way. Like, I, I pulled my knee back. And because I've got this stupid table underneath the table that holds like the Mac Mini and all the other dumb shit, I can't push my chair in all the way. So I'm at a weird angle every time I go to record. And it's, I swear to God, it, it, I keep jumping back to this in different episodes, but I am cursed by desks. It doesn't matter what the fuck type of desk I get. I slam my stupid legs into it all the time, dude. And it makes this dumbass fucking noise. It's it's becoming a bit. Oh, my knee, man. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> oh, my knee, man. Welcome back to Bob Tax, dude. <laughs> Old bum knee. Fucking podcasting from his shed in the middle of nowhere. Looking like a fat he was, Kaczynski. <laughs> he was pretty thin back then. Yeah, he. Uh, I mean, yeah, that was kind of... That seemed to be the first step onto Bob Kelly's uh, road to fatness. Because as we all know, I mean, after you get a surgery like that and you can't walk around and shit like that, and if you already have the proclivity to overeat, then, yeah, you're probably in trouble. <laughs> well, he's had multiple fat, so. That's true. Yeah, I've had a lot. I've had a couple of friends growing up. They've gone through several fats. Like in uh, in middle school, there was a couple of friends of mine got fat, then slimmed down. Then after high school, uh, during college years, got fat again. And it's weird. I've had a couple of friends that I can like think of immediately that have gone through like three or four fats. Well, fats, dude. I've only that's gone. That's Oprah. That's like Oprah f- fats. Oprah's gone through probably 10 fats. That's a ton of fats, dude. And that's like, I, you can't count celebrities with that much money though. Cause I feel like they're allowed to like, they can, they can go from being fat to being fit interchangeably. Like it, it's just such, it seems like an overnight thing with, in most cases could be to a certain i've gotten like i've gotten close like i've never been fat and i I think that genetically it's just probably not in the cards for me but you know i still have to be careful because it's it's even worse when you when you don't naturally gain weight it's easy to think that you're doing the right things for your body because you're not showing it physically but like i have to be careful you know like i i can't be eating those stupid breakfast sandwiches that i was trying to eat before the show I had you got to walk away from those things, dude. Oh, they're horrendous, dude. And I don't know why. It's probably the last time I'll ever buy it, to be honest, because I'm already kind of disgusted with eating in general. Like, I don't like... <laughs> I, I enjoy I enjoy good food, don't get me wrong, but I hate eating. I don't like to feel full. I don't like to feel heavy or weighed down or anything like that. And I don't like the weird fucking post-meal malaise you know, the only thing good about post meal is the nice Siggy you get to have afterwards. Post Malone malaise. Shut up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, dude. Um But it's nice, you know, like I, I like a good a good Siggy before a shit or something like that. It's just there's a couple of things. You know, if you didn't eat, you wouldn't be able to take those really good relieving shits. That's another thing. There's a few there's a few pros and cons with eating, but the farther we get into the future, I just want to become more and more the pros and cons about eating. I think it's a, <laughs> it may be there's a lot of pros to eating. Yeah. Okay. And there's one big con to not eat. Name <laughs> so, one. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I think there's a, I don't know if it's a pro and con situation when you talk about food. Adam's only talking like this because he doesn't binge and purge on the weekends. He's got a broom closet full of vomit jars. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that shit? Do you remember when uh, MTV tried to do like, uh, it, was, it was back in the days before intervention. It was like my, my something yes. crazy life or whatever the fuck. But like there was, yeah, 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 yeah. there yeah. was the chick hiding puke jars 
and shit in her closet. And she would, uh, she would do this thing where she would get money. Like she would go cash her paycheck or whatever. She'd go to the grocery store and she'd buy like hundreds of dollars worth of just shitty fucked up food. She would go out into the middle of nowhere and just sit in the back of her car and eat all of this trash food. And she would just purge it all out into these jars and then she would she would gather up all the jars put it in a trash bag and she would save them all it was the Why? grossest shit because it was part of her obsession like so she didn't she basically didn't want the food in her but she also like wanted to collect and keep all of her waste and stuff like that it was the weirdest shit but then again you have to wonder how much of that is true versus like what the producers of the show were like Hey, you know, it'd really be cool as if you could pretend to have a, you know, a puke hoarding problem. Oh, uh, yeah. Who knows? I mean, yeah. I mean, but, is this Howard Hughes? <laughs> I will say all the purging made her look fantastic, though. Yeah. What do you think no. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just said, what do you think about those purge movies? One. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're stone cold feminists here and we're calling you out careful <laughs> she she had anorexic boobs what do you think was going on up there nothing cool anorexic boobs are different it's like you can see you can see like three levels of uh chest bone before you see like a nipple or something it looks weird it looks like a it looks like a, a piece of a xylophone and somebody left a little like hershey kiss at the end or something like that it's the weirdest shit oh i didn't bring up boobs i asked yeah the first purge movie you thought was good right I thought you said something about anorexic boobs. No, no. Wow, I'm just fucking stupid then. Sorry, I mistook what you said. I did see the first Purge. I, I've seen all the Purge films. Yeah, the other ones are all right. But. Yeah, they're okay. I mean, it gets it gets more and more hacky as you watch them. Like the, the first one, I hated the first Purge. It's like all these, they try to make it deep with all these little underlying sub stories and shit. I don't care, bitch. Just fucking shoot someone fucking kill someone stab somebody do something that's the only reason you go to see purge due to some cartwheel rob lowe's yeah it's ridiculous though let's move on to a, a little article i have pulled up here so uh we you and i you and i rail against uh bezos and amazon a lot and we talked about his ability to essentially just buy countries and how like essentially he basically does kind of own in his own country within America and it's becoming more and more evident that this dude is just untouchable because right now uh, with this headline it just reads Amazon declines to commit to Jeff Bezos testimony in Congress and they're basically threatening to subpoena him if he doesn't show up and uh, it's just this dude's just stonewalling him he's hard he's hardballing him and he doesn't like it's crazy he's got so much money he does not have to comply with Congress yeah that's a of course. He's the richest person in the world. But isn't that nuts? Isn't that nuts? He's like a, he's becoming a supervillain in front of us and nobody's stopping him. Well, if you do the math, he's going to be a trillionaire in like a couple decades. This man went through the most expensive divorce in history in history arguably. Um and he's he's still the richest man on the planet. It's just insane. You can't do anything to this guy. No. I wouldn't yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised that if like he got assassinated, he's probably got his consciousness uploaded into some AI and can just like he can transfer into another like sleeve. Oh, he ain't gonna get assassinated. He's got like who knows what he has for security, dude. You're the richest person in the world. You don't think you have like Rob Lowe. <laughs> just Rob Lowe. It's a, great, it's a great move. I mean No, I'm saying he just has Rob Lowe for him. Like it's just Rob Lowe hanging out with him all day watch his back that's what i would do if i had jeff bezos money i wouldn't hire traditional security guards i would hire a bunch of celebrities and i'd be like all right you got to take the bullet for me it'd be like the secret service but i would take a lot of public figures so that people would be less likely to shoot at me they don't want to lose their uh they don't want to lose yeah. their idols i guess but yeah they're not going to give their life for them. yeah they would i'll pay them enough or i'll just i'll like i'll blackmail them like they do in uh in other parts of the world, like if they don't do what I say, then I'll take it out on their family or something. <laughs> it's possible to get so rich you don't have a consciousness. Or, I mean, you don't have a conscience anymore. Yeah, I mean, I would assume that is pretty possible. I mean, I mean can you imagine being the richest mug? No, no. I And I wouldn't want to be... That's the thing. I don't ever want to be at the top of anything. It, it's... 
it makes you a target. You know, it's it's one of those things where like notoriety is cool up to a certain extent, but you know, kind of like kind of like what Patrice O'Neill used to say about levels of fame and how he didn't necessarily want a certain level of fame because of the things that you owe others around you. It's like you don't reach a certain level of fame or notoriety or wealth without doing something or indebting yourself to somebody through some means. You know what I mean? Nobody gets to where they are alone. True. So like, I, I don't know when it comes, I mean, especially when it comes to like stuff like that. I mean, this dude's a, this dude's getting ready to be a fucking trillionaire. I would never want that type of publicity. I wouldn't want that type of wealth. And I certainly wouldn't want the type of problems that come along with that wealth. Mm-mm. No, but I mean, that wealth is just on unama- Yeah. You know, like you realize you could just have, you could own 10,000 acres and like no one could come near you. Like it'd be so high security and stuff. And you could just live in a fucking your own bubble. I think, I think it'd be cool to like buy a state. If you could just buy a state and make the state like a fortress, like, you know how fucking Trump's always talking about building a wall. What I would do is I would just, I'd build a, I'd build a fucking wall around a state and I wouldn't let anyone in except for my friends and family. Cause I just don't want to be bothered by the rest of the world. I would just be, I would be a recluse state. It'd be North Korea up in that motherfucker. People would be jumping that fence like a mug. They could try, dude. I'd have fucking trained assassins waiting for them. I'd have assassins. Ass assassins. Yeah. Well, no. What I would do, I'd have roaming rape gangs that <laughs> they have a license to rape anyone that jumps my wall. Anyone that tries to come in and like penetrate the walls of whatever stupid state I decide to buy with that mass, that massive amount of wealth, I would inst- I would install um, roaming rape gangs, and that would be my only form of self defense against the outside world. <laughs> well, I'd walk up to you, and you know what I would say. We're stone cold feminists here and we're calling you out. And then I would open up the bridge and I would say, you can get a doggy style. You can get a ling on your side. Those are your only choices. This is my house and I get to say, <laughs> yeah, I felt that one was going to come. You thought so, right? Pretty, yeah. pretty predictable. Yeah. I just had to tell the joke cause I thought I knew you would push the drop button. Can you believe that wasn't scripted folks? And it definitely was not. We really are just reaching for the height of mediocrity. <laughs> At all point, at all times, but oh, I, just fucking picture of a burger on this. Oh yeah, yeah. That's that's another thing that sucks too. So you know how yesterday you and I were playing video games and whatnot, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna order food. Everything about the internet sucks dick right now because every time I search for something or like yesterday ordering food on Grubhub, now today every time I go to a news site or whatever the fuck, they're inserting food ads. Kind of like when I was going through all of the uh, Sith stuff for the Star Wars episodes and shit. I started finding these uh, lightsaber forums and like these people that are really into doing lightsaber shit. And for like a month and a half, it was nothing but fucking lightsaber ads on every website I went to. I The internet is becoming such a bullshit fucking place. And it's, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, because there's so much good stuff on there. It's just, uh, you got to deal with all this other garbage on there too, man. Yeah, I mean, and the people are all up in arms now about the FBI being able to, uh, uh, I guess they don't need a warrant to search your, or they don't have a, they don't need a warrant to access your internet search history and stuff like that. People are all up in arms, but they don't realize that the government's been able to do that ever since the Patriot Act. Well, either way, though, Democrats and Republicans all voted for that to happen. Yeah, Thanks. 32 out of... There's no one looking out for the people. You know, our state was one of the only states that voted against it. Well, yeah, our representative. But yeah. Well, yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Yeah, you didn't see Colorado on that fucking list. There was like 32 states that voted in favor of that shit, dude. Are you kidding me? Yeah. And it's not even those states that are... It's these politicians that are just corrupted. They get paid off by stuff. Like, oh, I'll give you X amount of dollars for your campaign. You know, vote for this because... And again, that's another, like we were talking about yesterday on the fucking hangout, dude. Like that's a huge issue. If we don't, if we don't get money out of fucking politics, we're screwed. We're not going to get anywhere as a country. It's just going to get worse from here, people. Yep. You got to get money out of politics. It's like, how the fuck do you even do it now? Because if you choose not to play the game, they'll play the game without your ass. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. That's why like, of, yeah. oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. 
No, I was just saying you got all these guys. These guys are, well, guys and gals, I guess, but are just nuts, man. And it's they spend most of their time campaigning and rate fundraising. Right. They don't spend much time like actually legislating. No, of course know, not. Looking at like bills and things like that. They spend all their time calling people to get more money for their next run in office. Yeah, that's, I mean, that right there explains it all. And people are still out here. People still have the audacity to like call me out sometimes on the fact that, you know, like we don't vote and shit. It's like, what do you, what do you expect? From, what do you want from us? What do you expect us to do? Like, what are we, what do you think? We're, what do you think you're voting for? You think you're voting for somebody that's got your back? Yeah, you're voting for what? Oh, the lesser of two evils. Okay. They're both pieces of garbage. What do you want me to do? Exactly. Nothing. And that's the thing too, is like the lesser of two evils. It's such a, it's such a, a narrow difference between the two. You know oh, what I yeah. mean? There's every politician, they're all pushing the same narratives and they're all getting money from a lot of the same people. You know what they're I mean? They're all getting paid off, dude. I mean, look at how we handle war, wartime situations. Like we've, we've been guilty of funding both, both sides and providing weapons, weapons and aid to both sides in, in several different instances. This is just the way well, of the world. I mean, yeah, a lot of countries do that, but I mean, we've been at war for two decades. Right. Well, I mean, that's another thing about America too, is like, what? we've, we've never gone like a decade without war, not in recent history. Very few stretches. Yeah. And without I mean, some kind of like war type of like, like there's at least some posturing going on. Oh yeah. I mean, there's, yeah. I mean, if you go world war one, World War Two. I mean, if you go back from that, Spanish American, World War One, World War Two, Korea, yeah. Vietnam. I know, before. yeah. Well, Vietnam was a little different, man. I, I can tell you just like from my first hand experience, unlike any other war America's ever fought. I wouldn't expect you to know anything about that though. I mean I'll tell you this. What? Battlefield Vietnam, that game, <laughs> one of the best battlefield games. Yeah, that was probably the last one I actually enjoyed. I didn't really play um no. No, no, no. Battlefield 3, Battlefield 4. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I never really played those. I didn't really get into those. Um, I wish I would have because every time I saw you play it and like the the little bit I got to play it whenever we were hanging out at your old apartment and stuff, it was a good game and I enjoyed it. But like the only one I really played all the way through before those was the Vietnam one and it was awesome. Like in my opinion, it was better than like the Medal of Honor shit that was going on back then. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, those were all... Those were good, solid games, and you get, there's still servers today. Oh, I, I imagine so, dude. I was surprised when oh. I I was surprised when Skylar told me Day of Defeat still at like super active. Mm. Yeah, don't mm, that <laughs> just because yeah. you didn't play it, you fucking asshole. No, very much. Adam did the same thing yesterday when I was talking about reading books. Adam scoffs at people for reading books. <laughs> it's it's the weirdest thing to see too because i've never known another human being who felt a hundred percent comfortable making you feel like an ass for reading or for doing anything like to better yourself well no okay those are two different things reading betters you i don't know you were trying to tell me there's no benefit to reading yesterday <laughs> I'm saying is people people love to talk about what they're reading that they're reading yeah what you're I don't want to hear about you reading. That's the like, only reason you don't like reading? Yeah, don't I don't care what you're reading. Oh, I read this book. Did you cool? Don't care. You're just trying to say you read for the sake of bragging that you read. I don't give a fuck. But the context read. that I was talking about it yesterday, it was not like that at all. I was just I said in passing that a certain book was good or whatever the fuck. I didn't even I, it was so quick and Adam was like, "Oh, no, okay, books, whatever." And like I was like, "What the fuck?" Oh, it's like, "Ugh." That's even worse. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to hear about someone's read a book. Great, but you're—I just—that's you I understand. Good for you, you know, <laughs> for telling you all the all that time. You understand how ridiculous that is, though, right? No, it's not ridiculous at all. Fucking judging people for reading a book—you're a bag of shit. You're no, a bag I of mean, shit. I'll read like I've read books for education purposes, right? <sighs> Okay, that, uh, now you're splitting hairs. Not that's for edu but like I don't read like I don't you know, fiction stuff like that. You're not a recreational reader. 
I think it's because Adam can't read. <laughs> yeah, I can read. Yeah, I, I had a bunch of those kids in my class. Like, I could read a little bit before everybody. So, like, I remember watching the kids in class that, like, just couldn't quite figure it out. And so, you could just hear them, like, this is it's too hard. And, like, doing these weird little, like, kid frustrating noises and shit like that. And that's how you sound right now. You're just like, it's fucking books, man. You're fucking trying to learn, man. I disagree. No, I said I will read things to learn. I don't have a problem with that, but I don't want to hear, oh, I fucking read Harry Potter. I, okay, go fuck your mother, dude. Ain't what nobody talking about no punk-ass Harry Bot fucking Potter. Okay, there was there's tons of people that have been talking about Harry Potter books they've read in the past two decades, all right? Yeah, but that Potter. came and went, dog. Ain't nobody talking about look, Harry fucking Potter. Look, that's an example, okay? I'm not saying... Today, contemporary, that's what people are talking about. I don't know. What are they? Maybe they're talking about uh, the, next, the Twilight series or something. That's even longer ago, I think. Wait, no. No, I could be wrong in that. I never got into that. I don't fucking know. All I'm saying is like, you know what it was? This is what it was. It was the, uh-huh. fact, it was the fact that it had to do with a Star Wars book. And I know you love Star Wars, but I know you love Star Wars, but like the fact that you still scoffed because it involved a book of any sort is what got to me. That's what made me go, what the fuck is wrong with this guy? He hates reading. Mm-hmm. I don't hate reading. I just don't. I'm not. I don't like to read for imaginary purposes. <laughs> it's because you have no imagination. As a man of autism, you have very little. Um, you have very little imagination to you. You're a very structured man. And I think that's what it is. I'll watch movies about that stuff. I mean, yeah, if they're like 30 minutes long, you will. And you can't deny that. Like you, you fucking. When we had to, when we had to wake up and watch uh, "Once Upon a Time in Hollywood," you scoffed. You scoffed and did a fucking crazy exhale about fifteen times before we even started the movie because you saw how long it was before we even started it. Adam was like three and a half fucking hours, dude, Ugh. and just starts pacing yeah. around his room. <laughs> That's too. That's a very long movie. That's a little too yeah. Much. But once we started watching it, you were like into it. You really liked it. But then, like halfway through, Adam's into the movie. We're watching the movie. It's a good time. He starts bitching about how long it is again. Yeah, dude. You were like, "I want a goddamn cigarette," and I think that's about the time that I was like, "Dude, just fucking pause it." And we paused it. We had a we had a little intermission. Right, but it was like, "Come on, wrap this up, dude." Wrap it up, B. That's another issue I have with you too. Is like you're you're fucking you you need intermissions in movies. You don't you don't think you don't think like to just pause it. You're like waiting for the intermission to happen. It's like, dude, just hit fucking pause when you got to pee. Yeah, but I mean, well, we've talked about it. it'd be nice to, if it's gonna okay. This is only pertains to long movies, so this only pertains to like Quentin Tarantino mm-hmm. and like Scorsese at this point. Scorsese. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I like to say that. If you're going to make a movie that's three hours or longer, put an intermission. It's unnecessary. It's out of respect to the people that are watching it. That, hey, we respect that you're going to be in here for the long haul of three hours. But we're going to give you a real intermission because this is a plot. Like, uh, even if if you pause it, you're you're going to, if you structure it right for an intermission, the plot is going to be at a certain point where you can retain that information and kind of maybe speculate as where to, where it's going to go. How long are you taking shits for? No, I'm well, you want to maybe want to get popcorn. You know, you want to do, you got to, you want to make another shit after a shit. You want to have a cigarette. I'm not saying it's no, it's a 10 minute intermission. Um, you even have a time frame worked out. Yeah. It would be a 10 minute intermission. You understand you can hit pause. No, no, no. Maybe ten minutes is not a, gen- a generous enough. Maybe fifteen. Maybe twelve. Why don't you maybe just Why don't you just pick up where you left off the next day? No, no. Twelve minutes. You get twelve minutes, and you can have a cigarette. You can, you know, refill your stuff. Take a piss. Come back. You can go you scrap know, a load off in the sink if you need to. <laughs> but it's about the art of in- making a movie where you have a natural intermission at the right time. You can walk away from it for a second. Your natural intermission is your fucking thumb tendon moving in a certain direction to hit the pause button on the fucking remote. They have it. They've made intermissions seamless you're, and at you're will. Not, you're not understanding. I understand where you're coming from, Adam. I get it. But the only time that's even relevant or would work 
is if you're in a movie theater and in most cases like if you go like when master and commander came out that fucking four hour piece of shit with russell crowe trying to pretend that he's got chops they put an intermission in the middle of it and it, it was a clear like i think it was like a 10 15 minute intermission that's the only time it's practical to have an intermission in a movie. You can't make a long movie with an intermission in the middle of it when it's going to DVD or something like that, or if it's on a streaming service, because you have the ability to fucking pause it. But you're not, you're really not understanding me. Like it's the art of creating the perfect intermission. There is no art. Perfect break. There's no art to that. Where everyone can say, Hey, we're all going to stop at this point. And we're all going to take a break for 12 months. If you pause a movie, everyone is forced to take that break with you. There is no gentle way of doing it. You hit pause, everybody uh, agrees. There's, uh, there's a, there should be a point in the plot where it flows perfectly into an intermission where, okay, we're getting a lot of uh, plot developments, and they're you know about to go up on the, the hit the roller coaster of this the arc of the story like pesci's just about to make the last turn in that vice grip on the dude's head and he like looks up at the camera and goes go take a fucking shit that's yeah. when you're supposed to do it you, you you just wait for pesci to give you the cue you want the actors to look into the camera and tell you when it's okay to go and fucking pop some popcorn and have a ciggy no you're missing the point i don't think i am i think i think call that... in call in people agree <laughs> shut up but tell people to call in Adam was doing that shit last night. It's like, wait a second. There's no, uh, we don't, we, we're not set up for that. But um, I, I don't, I get what you're saying. I understand what you're saying in terms of like, if that were something that movies did, I, I get it. I understand the concept that you're trying to pitch. It's just that I'm a man of reason and logic, and it makes no fucking sense to do that at any capacity, especially with the the multitude of um venues in which you can take in this type of media everything you can't do it at a movie theater well no because they actually put a fucking intermission in the film when it's in a movie theater did they put an intermission in, in a long time ago or long once upon a time i'm pretty ago? sure i saw it in the theater but i'm pretty sure that's when i was still drinking and you know how i was in movie theaters during those times I'd go see a movie like two, three times and not remember like maybe a third of it. <laughs> Shut up. That's not funny. <laughs> well, most of the movies weren't that good anyways. That's true. Were you, wait, were you there? Were you there when we went to the movies on my birthday? Like the last? No. no. Oh, dude. Yeah. You would have probably killed me, dude. I was like, we brought like, we brought the party to the movie theater and I was like, I had several open bottles of liquor. We were doing cocaine bumps. We were taking flash picture, like flash photography in the back of the theater. Like, and then, um, and then <laughs> one of these chicks that were with us, she kept trying to come on to the girl that I was dating at the time. And then she kept trying to like reach over and touch me and shit like that. And the girl I was with at the time was super not into it, dude. She was like, she kept looking at me like, yo dude, if you touch this bitch, I'm going to start fighting in this, in this theater. And, uh, it, it was, dude, I, I think about it sometimes. And like, I, I still don't remember all of the night, but I just remember thinking that like, dude, if you would have been there, you would have probably, that would probably end our friendship. You'd have been like, this dude's a fucking idiot. I'm out. <laughs> No, I probably would just would have left. True. Yeah, you are a you are a man of class. I do have to give you that. We just ninja vanish. Oh, did you see? Uh, so, all right. This is this this. I, when I first saw this, it's always sad when somebody loses a kid. But uh, Melissa Etheridge's what? son, uh, his name was Beckett Cipher. He died here in Colorado, um, age twenty one, and it looks like that um her son had an opioid issue and so i don't know this to me it's like at first it reads sad and then as i read the article more i just became completely cold and detached from the situation because as soon as you read the fucking uh headline that a celebrity or a musician had a kid die the first thought that always pops into my head is like Oh, okay, well, I mean, first off, we all agree that career musicians always make the best parents, right? You know, traditionally, it's like, you know, look at Clapton. Great dad. But, you, well, same thing, though. It's like you... you these, shut those windows, dude. That's what I'm saying. It's like, so this bitch, this bitch has been uh, doing these, like, live 
concerts on YouTube and all this uh, and all this other shit. She's been doing them like daily or something like that. She was performing online for fans and whatnot. Meanwhile, her fat kid is over here in Denver popping pews and not waking up. And it's like, yeah, you're over here all heartbroken now and you want all this sympathy, but it's like, it was all about fucking you. You know, it was all about you until your fucking kid offed himself with his stupid, like, look at with that stupid riding the bus with my sister haircut. He looks like Rosie O'Donnell. Uh, well, I mean. Or looked. He, I should say he looked like Rosie O'Donnell. He's coughing. He's coughing I, stuffing I, now. I doubt, I doubt that's a recent picture of him. I don't that's know. What, I mean, it says it's from uh, September oh, 27, 2011. Well, still, that's a terrible haircut. And that's a terrible yeah, picture was, to be fucking. He was like 10 in that picture. Well, I guess you wouldn't want to show him now, right? You can't really show that. But uh, it's just, I don't know, man. I It was it was tough. Like right now, I, I'm sure that like me saying this stuff doesn't sound super cool to a lot of people. But like, what did you expect? What did you expect? Like you're making, you're a career musician you you had uh so the semen for this for this kid was donated by uh david crosby Mm -hmm. from crosby stills and nash and it's like you know first of all what the fuck middle age rock star come what do you like you want your fucking kid to be born with track marks i feel like already genetically he's in a he's at a predisposition to fall victim to a lot of this crap that happens when people reach a certain level of fame and whatnot Yeah, who the fuck knows? I mean, but it's just, it's just, you know, for a fact that most celebrity parents, I, 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 no one's going to be able to convince me that they're like attentive, good parents and shit like that. I just hate when there's this, this most likely not. Don't you, don't you hate when there's a public outpour for like sympathy and all this other shit when, when stuff like this happens, because you, you have to realize that, you know, from a, from a home life standpoint, this bitch is a celebrity. She's trying to fucking further her career any way she can. It's like, you know, she's she's doing these stupid live concert, concerts, you know, it's, instead of calling her son to make sure he's not fucking overdosing on pubes. There's a lot that can be done to prevent this type of shit, and I just feel like it's always too little too late. And then everybody's always like, oh, it just sucks so bad that it happened. And it's like, yeah, it sucked, but what were you doing to prevent it in the first place? Yeah. I mean, it's, well, she should be able to afford the, the best care and rehabilitation and everything you would think too yeah yeah that's another thing is just the resources to get the kid help i mean he's a grown he was a grown man so yeah you live and you learn dude you sometimes what she can do i mean 21 if he doesn't want to take any help yeah that's he's 21 that's true i was like that's when i that was probably one of the um that was the age, like when I could legally drink, that's when I knew it was going to be a problem too. And you're right, dude. When you're 21, you don't give a fuck. You're, you're stupid as shit in your 20s. It's a, it's, a, it's a miraculous achievement if you make it into your 30s, I think, just as a normal human being. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. All the dumb shit we do, all the dumb crap that we fucking, all the stupid scenarios we get ourselves into that just are unnecessary. But I'll tell you one thing. Considering the the DNA that is shared with this kid, he's fucking lucky he didn't come out like that retard from Mice and Men. He he actually ended up being like of sound mind and body right. for the most part. Lenny. Well, oh yeah, yeah, Lenny. I mean, that's his name. I always like I remember reading that book and doing a just a goofy, dopey voice in my head whenever you would read his parts, you know. <laughs> come to my window. Ugh. Why? Why? <laughs> we're stone cold feminists here and we're calling you out. Fucking terrible. But yeah, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Bless up, rest in peace, all that shit. Oh, for sure. I mean, what are you going to do? Suck. Oh, speaking of blessing up, dude, uh, homeboy died. Frank. Uh... Kelly Undo. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Well, I can't remember his name. The old guy from uh, from uh, Best in Show. Frank Willard. Yeah, Frank Willard. Yeah. Bless up to Frank Willard. R- rest in power, whatever the fuck people oh, are saying. Best in Show. If you want to see a fucking funny-ass movie, download Best in Show. It's a great film. It's an awesome movie, dude. It's got, I mean, dude, talk about the perfect cast, too. I did not appreciate that movie when it first came out as much as I do now in my uh, in my advanced years. It's a brilliant movie. Oh, speaking of movies, dude, did you fucking, uh, did you watch, uh, Parasite? 
Uh, Rem- no, I have not. Dude, last week we said we were going to watch each other's movies that we suggested. <laughs> I know. When I get done with work, I just I don't watch TV at all. Dude, you know what? You know what? Fuck this shit. You know what? That's right. Baloney boys. I'm going to say fuck all the other bullshit. This week, our very own Adam is the baloney boy. For not watching the goddamn movie Parasite. And you know what's even worse? I sat through that fucking bunk ass movie that you suggested with the with, hey, the, with the supposed open ending that's supposed that to be movie, so creepy. That movie's very short. So it I it was like a two hour movie, dude. It was not. It was maybe an hour and fifteen minutes or an hour and twenty minutes. Oh, I defy you to IMDB that shit right now then. Already on it, dude. Was I, what is it? It's gotta be two hours. Because if it isn't two hours, it felt like two hours. And I'm not saying it was a bad movie either. It was it was a decent movie. I'm I'm glad I saw it. But as for the whole all oh, the it was it was open ended, you don't really know who the killer is. It obviously you know who the killer is. It's the fucking it's the old bitch's husband. All right. It was an hour and thirty four minutes. No, they never you never get that fully. And I'm gonna it tell you why. A lot of people think it's the plumber. No. Yep. No. Then, uh, in that case, then the plumber is the old bitch's husband. No, that's true. Because there's just too many congruencies. Like, all right, the the first the first major thing is the slip up. And, and I'm sorry, this is a spurler alert for any of you that want to fucking you know any of you that are holding out to see Open House, but it's on Netflix. Get scared, watch it. Yeah, if you. <laughs> it's on Netflix. If you if you have an hour and a half, you don't mind never getting back. Go ahead and fucking watch that film. But. So the old lady that the fucking uh, main the main bitch encounters, she says that she had a she said that her husband died. The old lady said her husband was dead, and then like literally twenty minutes into the movie, she's like, "Oh, my husband said he can't wait to meet you guys," and the wife's like, "Oh, I thought you said he was dead," and she was like, "No, he's not dead." So that's Kate, that's number one right there. Number one, number two is the fact that during some of those scenes when he first starts like doing bad shit to people they show his hands they show his overall stature he looks like an older man he looks like a guy who is probably pushing into his 60s whereas it would have matched up with the same age range as the older lady that was talking no, to the main that character old lady was in her fucking 70s that's not true at all you are a goddamn liar she was at least in her maybe maybe early 60s i'd say she looked the perfect early 60s and the third Day giveaway was when the son is running through the woods and he hides under that log and the old bitch just happens to be walking right by that log as the old man killer is in the in the area and she just stops right by where he's hiding and she just looks out into the distance and smiles as if she's complicit or as if she as if she is complicit in the killings that are going on around her. It's an old man. It's her husband. Call in. Case closed. No, no call in. Case closed. Case closed. Mm. And the fact that you don't see that, for the stone cold fact that it is, is is not only troublesome, but it makes me want to do physical harm to you. I'm only stone cold on one thing. We're stone cold feminists here, and we're calling you out. It's almost as if you have power over the soundboard, dude. <laughs> we finally figured it out. <laughs> It only took immense distance and a global pandemic. <laughs> but uh, I, I digress. No, you're still a piece of shit for not for not realizing that. And also, you're you deserve to be killed in your sleep for not watching the movie. I suggested such a great movie, and you would have you would have enjoyed every minute of it. You would have been thankful you watched it. You probably would have felt silly for telling me to go see that lump of shit that you told me to see. No, no, I'll, I'll, I'll go, I'll watch it. Go see it. It's, it's, no, it's just like it, you know, I got to focus on it. It's subtitles. What am I getting? There's a sub watching it. Well, no, but that's what I'm saying. <laughs> subtitle, you know. No, I, I feel you, but that's the thing. You just, you're talking to a guy that you've already <laughs> said doesn't like to read. I've already outed you. <laughs> that's true. That's true. And you know what? I'm going to. Fuck, I, I guess I can't really take away the fact that you're still a baloney boy, but you're right. 
I know for a fact you just straight up don't like reading, so I guess I can give you a little bit of clemency when it comes to that, but the movie is so fucking good. And you know what's even worse? Several people that heard that episode have told me that they watched the movie Parasite and they enjoyed it and they thanked me for suggesting it. My own fucking co-host, my best friend, ain't even ain't even giving me the time of day. It's disheartening. I get it, but look. It, what do you have to say for yourself? Thing, no, it'd be one thing if like, you know, we I didn't call you and talk on the phone or anything. Do that all the time. But it ain't about that. It's <laughs> no. just like, oh. Uh, I gotta invest too much time in watching a fucking subtitled movie. A fucking how- brilliant movie. I'm sure it's brilliant, and I don't have time for brilliant movies. You don't have time for brilliant films? No. Nah. <laughs> you are such. You are just such a cup of warm water, dude. You are the plainest sandwich walking around the planet Earth. Yeah. It's a burden being your friend. It's just like I was describing the other day. I described Adam's friendship. So basically. Being friends with Adam is like walking around with a singular grain of sand under the hood of your clit, and it's stuck there all the time. Nothing you could do about it. You might as well just learn to like it. You 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 really are just awful. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh I shit! I forgot. Actually, I forgot to. I wanted to throw this in real quick too. How interesting is it that Puerto Rico's uh, voting on uh, whether or not they want to become a full fledged state? That was interesting. I thought it was interesting because I saw it earlier today and I thought it was interesting because at the end of the day, regardless of what they vote on, wouldn't Congress still have to like, okay that? Like, wouldn't the, wouldn't the vote come down to Congress at the end? Most likely. I don't fucking know, but they vote on that all the time. Oh, really? This is like a regular thing? It's happened multiple times in the past. Shit. Shows you how much I know. Yeah. I'm over here touting about like I'm over here touting and, and, and glorifying reading and there I've done very little of it in that regard. Yeah. Don't no 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 don't yeah like you're fucking like you you're being vindicated in any way you still don't get to get away with like fucking you know you belittle people for reading. It's not cool. Clearly, uh, you could say <laughs> I'm well read. <sighs> Wish you were well dead. You should have the hold on. <laughs> <laughs> The CSI drop. Where it goes, ah. Oh, the yeah. I'll just do that. I'll uh, I'll do the instrumental, and instead of the actual yeah, I'll just go yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here giving away intellectual property. Intellectual property. Well, that's another topic. I mean, that's another topic for another day. Because if you think Daddy's going long on this one, you are fucking dead wrong. Jesse Ventura might be running for the Green Party. Vote Ventura. Wouldn't that be just a brilliant thing? It's like every other day. and It's just, you. we'd have to deal with another fucking television guy. I'm sick of dealing with television guys. <laughs> television. I'd vote for him. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I do the guy's voice. It's one of the, it's one of the only impressions I've ever like actively worked on. And he's such an pro- interesting guy, but. I'd, I'd probably vote for him. I would too. I mean, you have to even, I mean, just even for the meme, but whatever. That's I, that's neither here nor there. I kind of hope that he does. I would like to see that just because it would just add a whole new element to the to the entire political process. Like it would just be so funny to see these media whores going at it the way that they would go at it. Oh, It'd, I know. Well, it doesn't matter now anyways. We have, you know, just a it's this election year is going to be you know, just bunk. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's been it's been super bunk for the past few like rounds now i guess <clears throat> i don't know the last few elections just haven't really impressed me much i, I think the last time i actually they don't impress me much the, the last time i actually got a good laugh at a at a political campaign or at anything like that was when uh when dean did his bia thing I thought that was that was one of the greatest political flubs I've ever seen in my lifetime, and it just completely decimated his campaign. That was it. He was rising to the top, and wow, well, you can fall quick with one exciting yell. Yeah, dude, it's uh, it, and it's crazy that something like that has that power. 
it's like right there he had everybody just you know dick riding he had everybody right. dick riding and then he just fucked it all up but just by but just by getting too excited and going off the script you don't ever go off the script but i mean compared to today's politics yeah i mean i feel like that's nothing oh speaking of politics though when once we start getting closer to um you know the actual election i think we're gonna have to bring back paul r nelson oh no yeah and if you don't know who paul r nelson is then do some googling familiarize yourself because it's a character you know this guy you would think that this guy's bullshit and with his ads and his political statements and stuff like that this dude is a hundred percent He's he's brass tacks about everything he fucking says, and his his smear campaigns are a work of art. So in the coming months, once we start getting closer and it's and it's more suitable with the theme of the zeitgeist, then we're gonna start featuring some more Paul R. Nelson, and uh, you guys will get to learn a little bit more about him. But he's he is, in my opinion, one of America's greatest politicians. <laughs> oh boy, his he policy sucks, but boy, does he know how to make a commercial. I don't know if that's true. Dude, didn't he say that his, like, I, I'm pretty sure in one of his campaign ads, he alluded to the fact that his opponent fucked animals. <laughs> it was the worst. There was an insinuation, I believe. Yeah. Oh, yeah. dude, like, <laughs> how do you get away with that? Just walk away, dude. In America? But, I mean, what it would be nice to see him throw his hat in the ring, dude. I'd love to see him come out of retirement or whatever the fuck he's been up to the past. I don't know. I think the last time, like, I only know about I only know about Paul R. Nelson because of Opie and Anthony. But like, has has Paul R. Nelson been in the public eye since then? No, of course not. That was so long ago. Yeah, of course not. But I'm looking forward to bringing him back, and I, I just want to kind of I just want people to be aware of him. I want people to be aware that like. American politics allows for the existence of this man. <laughs> oh, I know. But I guess uh, that being said, we should uh, we should go ahead and hit the road and get into some Siggy time. Daddy's got to work a Let double tomorrow. Well, just think though. What? Potentially, if you're trying to prevent that coronavirus, smoke clouds. That's true. You know, guys, why don't you just go ahead and pick up smoking? It's a preventative measure, and plus you look cool doing it. But until next time, it's been a pleasure. Please make sure that you go and follow all of our uh, social media accounts. We're The Real Brass Tax on Instagram, Brass Tax Podcast on Facebook, and of course, Brass Tax Podcast on YouTube. We're going to be doing a lot more uh, live streams on YouTube and stuff like that. We had our first one last night, and I do say that it was fun and successful. I had a good time. But, uh, you know, you can go check that out if you want to. Be sure to like and subscribe, all that bullshit. And if you have any suggestions for the show or you ever want to be considered as a, as a guest on future episodes, you can email us at therealbrasstax at gmail.com. And if you'd like a free brass tax sticker, make sure you hit us up with any of your uh, mailing information. You can hit us up through any of our social media accounts and we'll send one of those out to you. And until next time, be safe, be happy, and go fuck your mother. So, what if you blow smoke rings on the butthole? Does that sanitize it? <laughs>